Dart 2.6 is just around the corner and in fact it may as well be out already as you are watching this video. Dart has lived through a revival linked with the popularity of Flutter and people responsible for bringing new features into this language cannot seem to stop working. There is one big feature which we were asking for all along, especially the Kotlin developers and now is here extension members. Hello, welcome to Resale Coder, where you are getting prepared for real app development by building better, faster, more stable apps. So subscribe and hit the bell if you want to grow your coding skills. As I said, Dart 2.6 may already be officially released as you are watching this tutorial, but if it's not and you would like to follow along with this tutorial and try out extensions for yourself, you need to install the dev version of Dart SDK. To do that, just go to this web page, which is dart.dev forward slash get Dart and make sure to follow along with uh, instructions for your operating system and make sure to install the dev release of Dart SDK right here. The link to this documentation is also in the written tutorial and also be sure to check the written tutorial out from the link in the description because over there you can also find all of the code written in this video and go through this lesson at your own pace. The last setup step so that we do not get any unnecessary warnings in our code is to go over to PubSpec YAML and just make the minimum SDK version to be 2.6.0. This way, whenever we use extensions, we are not going to get any warnings. Why do we even need extensions? The best way to explain that is on an example, because usually with languages like Java or even Dart before it had extensions, you have to define utility classes. For example, if we wanted to do something with a string, maybe validate if it represents an email address, sure, we could just create a bool returning method, top level function, basically bool is valid email. And this would accept a string, str, and run some logic in here but creating just top level functions is not a good practice because we want to probably group these multiple functions which operate on a string so we would create a class string util which would contain this method but it would be a static method and i'm just going to paste its implementation from the written tutorial because it's not really important what we are doing in here. We are basically just checking if a simple regular expression has a match in the past in string. If it has, we know that the string represents a valid email. Immediately here, you can see that we've created just a bunch of boilerplate. The way to use this code now is to call string util dot is valid email and pass in a string, for example, some string. For developers which are spoiled by object-oriented programming, this is somewhat unnatural because usually when you call something on a string, you do it like this, some string dot replace all and so on. But we cannot just simply modify the string class to add an instance method to it because we do not own the source code for the string class. But that's precisely what extension methods are set out to solve. We'll be able to add the isValidEmail as kind of a instance method by adding an extension method. So let's do that right now. Let's leave the string util class in here just for reference and we are going to create our first extension member. I said member because it's not actually going to be a method. Most of the time you will not need to create methods for extensions for a reason which you are about to see in just a bit. Defining an extension is simple. Just type in extension, string extensions, let's call it. Now we need to specify on which class these extensions will be added. 
so on string and now let's just define is valid email bool returning method but something doesn't play right we are passing in a string so now what would happen is that we would have some string and we can now call is valid email but we still need to pass in uh, the string so we didn't solve anything basically we can of course get rid of this string parameter because now we are inside an extension method so we can use this keyword as if we were inside the actual string class and as you know specifying this grants you the current instance on which you are operating and as i said this is not going to be an extension method actually because now it doesn't need to take in any parameters so we can make it into an extension property which will be get only property so bool get is valid email and now we can simply check if the string represents a valid email by calling this get only property is valid email which is actually an extension let's actually test if it works so dynamic output and we are going to print out this output so now if we run this code we should see that it's false which is uh, true so let's add an email at gmail.com and now it should be true of course there are more types of extensions which you can define apart from method extensions and property extensions let's again demonstrate them on the string class so we're going to create another string extension it's going to be just a simple method returning a string and we want it to concatenate two strings with a space so concat with space it's going to of course take in another string so string other and in here we are going to just return interpolated string containing this space and other awesome so now we can call this concat with space method from within the main method so let's do that right now we are going to call first maybe then concat with space second and when we run this we should see first and then a space second and we surely see the correct output but you have already seen how to define extension methods so why am i showing you this that's because we want this functionality to be also callable with a custom operator concatenating two strings with an operator is done by first plus second right but this does not add a space in between these two concatenated strings what if we could specify something like first string and second string and this would put a space in between them currently as you can see we get an error on the end operator because it says that the operator and isn't defined for the class string and surely extensions can be used even to define custom operators to do that we're just going to define string returning operator which will be the and ampersand symbol it will take in string other and it's just going to return the same thing as the concat with space extension method and now we don't get any errors on the ampersand and we can actually use it so instead of concat with space and using all of these parentheses we can just say first and second and now let's see the output it should still output first space and second so we can define properties methods and also operators as extensions on certain classes let's now deal with class hierarchies let's imagine that you want to add an extension to an integer and of course doing so is very simple we can just define extension int extensions on int and let's say we want to have 
a method returning an integer add 10. I know it's pretty useless, but whatever. This will return this plus 10. So now we can add 10 to any integer. But then, of course, you realize that integers are not the only numeric data type which is present in Dart. We also have doubles. So let's also define an extension, doubles extension or double extensions on double, which is going to do the same thing, but it of course needs to return double. But just looking at this code makes me want to cry, honestly, because it's pure code duplication. These are just two simple methods, but still the duplication is immense here. So let's look at the integer type. Hmm, extends num. Let's see about the double type. Well, that extends num too. So double and integer have a common superclass and that's the num class. So couldn't we just define a single extension on num? Let's try that out. So we're going to paste that in extensions here. We're going to rename them to num extensions on num. And it should probably return num, right? Because it can be both a double and an integer. We have seemingly successfully refactored the code into a more readable and maintainable one extension. So we can just delete these separate in extensions and double extensions, right? We did not even test them in uh, the main method, but they are so simple that we don't even need to test them. Let's just test the num extension and let's actually see why what we've done here is not the correct way to do things when it comes to superclasses and extensions. Let's delete all of this and instead we're going to define int and int which is going to be equal to 1 add 10. Awesome, so we have just the num extensions and we can call add 10. That's awesome. Add 10 will return a number which is going to be automatically cast into an int. What's not so awesome though is that we can also define int which should be a double and set that equal to 1.0. So we are operating with a double by adding that decimal place. And now let's call add 10. Add 10 again returns a number but this time the actual type, the runtime type of the number will not be an integer, but a double. And this will surely result in an exception once we run this code. Integer has been successfully incremented by 10, so it's now with the value 11, but the line below, which should be a double, we get a type error saying that type double is not a subtype of type int. So what we've done with the num extensions is that we've gotten rid of any reasonable compile time warnings and errors and we are going to find out about our type errors only at runtime. The more errors you can catch before running the code, the better. We somehow need to make the return type of the add 10 method to not be a num but to be more specific something like generics. So how can we define generic extensions and will they solve our problems with not getting proper compile time errors? Well, of course they will solve all of our problems and defining generic extensions is absolutely straightforward. We're going to modify this num extensions and let's just rename it to num generic extensions. And now, it's going to have a generic type parameter, t, and it's going to be an extension on t. Of course, we cannot just leave this t generic parameter to be completely unconstrained because by doing that, we cannot even use the plus operator because it's not defined for the unconstrained t, which by default is of type object. So we are going to provide a generic constraint that t should extend num. And also, instead of returning num from add 10, we're going to return 
t and immediately you can see that a compile time error has been produced by the line which tries to put a double into an integer variable. It says that a value of type double cannot be assigned to a variable of type int. Try changing the type and so on. So now we get awesome tooling, we get awesome guidance from the Dart compiler. And all we did is that instead of defining an extension directly for the superclass, we define the extension to be generic and just make the type parameter be constrained to the superclass, which we want to define the extensions on, and then also use the generic type as the return type of the method. Awesome, so that's basically it about extensions. As you can see, they are really simple to use, but they are also powerful at the same time, and they will make our lives so much easier, and I cannot wait to see more awesome features coming into Dart, because as I said in the beginning, the Dart team is working like crazy to add all of the cool features into the Dart programming language because it's going through a boom in usage because of the awesomeness of a framework that Flutter is. To go through this tutorial at your own pace once again and to get all of the code, check out the written tutorial available from the link in the description. And if you do not want to miss more tutorials like this, definitely subscribe to this channel and also join the notification squad by hitting the bell button to make sure you grow your Flutter skills and also Dart skills because here on Reso Coder, I am determined to provide you with the best app development tutorials and resources out there. If this video helped you to learn about extension properties, methods, operators, and also about generic extensions, which are coming up in Dart 2.6, give this video a like and also share it with other Flutter and Dart developers who will surely benefit from it too. If you have any questions, leave a comment. If you want to get weekly Flutter news delivered right into your inbox, go to resocoder.com from the link in the video description and subscribe to my mailing list and see you in the next video.